Shalom, Kolayim La Yahu Bashim Yah Shah. Also, with the bonds and elders of GMS and honest Yuakim, peace and blessing you, brother, sister, and listen, old fool. Let's call them La Yahu Bashim Yah Shah. Very busy week in prophecy, man. A lot of prophecy. Got more videos to do to probably Yah Bashim Yah Shah, of course. Um, being a watchman, the true watchman of Yah Bashim Yah Shah. Blowing the trumpet and warning the sheep, man. All right, that's our job from the apostles and the elders on down. You know, brothers is pushing the right doctrine, man. Okay, and that's um, singing the right song. Okay, and um, one of the uh, videos I did this week on the news report was that Jesus, the Redeemer statue in Brazil, getting struck by lightning. And um, they show you over there in Brazil, the tribe of Asher. They built another statue, and I believe it's the town is in Kando, I believe. But it's even bigger than that statue, man. In Cantat, in Cantado, all right. Idolatry, man. That's grave idolatry, man. And the Lord is gonna cast on all these idols, man. Okay, and I'm see if I can put a video up in the post production on. These different nations and their different statues and idols that they have. Okay? These are all idols, man. They're all tied to different gods. Okay? But we worship the true power, a living God, man. And that's what Yahweh Shai said. Let me get that in Matthew, the 24th chapter. Okay, let me get that in Matthew 24. All these idols are going to get cast down, man. You got a lot of. You know, Jake's still following Christianity. That's so idolatry. Cesare Bourget, that's not the Mashiach. Right? You even got Israelites calling on that name, man. Guys who know the Israelites calling on Christ. That's not the man's name. His name is Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Okay? Matthew 24, verse 1. It says, And Yahweh Shai went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Yahweh Shai said unto them, See not at all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And he was talking about back then, 70 AD. Okay, but also in this day and time, especially in America, Babylon. But all you idols in different parts of the world tackling this lesson. It's all going to be cast down. It's all going to be thrown down, man. Okay? There's only one true power of the heavens, man. And the father name is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. And those names are going to be exalted, man. And right now, those idols and those religions and those doctrines are being cast down spiritually by the word, man. The truth of these scriptures, man. Like we said, starting from the apostles and elders on down, brothers going out there in the highways and hedges, man, pushing this truth, man. All right, that's how Christianity is taking a hit now. A lot of people not going to the Christian church like they used to. Okay, church attendances went down, their business is falling. All right, more and more, Jake, even the celebrity world are finding out that they're Israelites, man. So, yes, physically, like we're going into this lesson, all going to be cast down. But spiritually, all is already cast down already, man. And you got Israelites waking up in amongst the Northern Kingdom in South America, man. You see, South and Central America. Right? And, and wherever our people are scattered at. All these religions and the Tata Kaaba in there as well, man. That bullshit, that stone is going to be destroyed, man. The Muslims worshiping a rock. Okay, now let me get the precept to prove it. Let me get Isaiah the second chapter. All right, let's get Isaiah the second chapter, man. You never know, after the next disaster, that shit may go down, just like in the uh, movie 2012. All right, because that same cloud that appeared over Turkey before the earthquake is the same mysterious cloud that appeared over Argentina. All right, so, um, you know, that that's the tribe of Neptali. You see? But let me guess. Isaiah 22, verse 17. And I'm because the northern king is heavy into idolatry, man. But let me read this. So Isaiah 22, verse 17. It says, 
Well, this is going into what the mountains of Yahweh Bashim I'll try to begin in the chapter, the kingdom being set up again. All right. But let me jump to verse 17. It says, And all the loftiness of man shall be bowed down. And these people, as in this day and time, scripture says, men shall be lovers of them own selves. This is an era of vanity, man. Okay? Likes and views and validation. All right. The average person is proud. The scripture says most. Book of Sirach, he said, I hate a poor man that's proud, man. People think they the shit. That's just because of this whole social media era we in, man. Okay? The average imbecile walking around, the average whore, everybody thinks they're a star, man. But we in the time now where the most high gonna bring down these high looks. All right? And the scripture even says those of high stature, what we've seen it with these celebrities and these artists, they gonna be hewn down. Okay? They all being hewn down, man. Because they're also idols in this world. Okay? The scripture says it's Isaiah 2 and 17. And the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be made low. And Yahweh Shemel Shah alone shall be exalted in that day. Especially when you see Yahweh Shai back, man. Okay? It says, and the idols he shall utterly abolish. So all these idols. These different gods, they're going to be abolished, destroyed, disseminated forever, man. And all these religions and institutions that's tied to it, they're going to be destroyed. And their followers. So unless these Israelites repent, they're going to be put down as well. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks with, oh, let me read out, and into the caves of the earth for the fairy Halbashmael shot and the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake terribly the earth. Also goes to Habakkuk, the third chapter. All right, the rich man we know on Revelation, the sixth chapter, they're going to try to hide themselves, the elite. Okay? The NWO ultimately is going to fail, a great read. And in that day, a man shall cast his idols of silver and the idols of gold, which they made each other for himself to worship, to moles and to the bats, and to go into the clefts of the rock and into the tops of the rag pole. For the fear of Yahweh Shah and for the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake terribly the earth, man. Okay? People gonna get rid of their idols of gold and their silver. Like we said, these different statues, these 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 temples, alright? They all gonna cast be cast down. Alright, so it says in Revelation the first chapter. It says, but every eye shall see him. Who Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? He alone is going to be exalted in that day, man. Call him like Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? And like we say, you know, that foolish statue over there in Brazil, man. That's, there's going to be a lot of death amongst you tribes, man. A lot, man. She to tell you how Ephraim is joined unto idols. Leave him alone. You know, because that goes back to the time of Jeroboam. But even Solomon, the reason why the, the, the two kingdoms split, because he was going into idolatry, man. okay? Following the wide, following the gods of his concubines. When you read 1 Kings, the 11th chapter, they turned his heart away from serving the Most High, man. You see? And the Most High even warned him in dreams, and he still won't listen. But after that, he rose up Jeroboam, and Jeroboam, the history, as we know, you, I think you can read that in 1 Kings, the 12th chapter, uh, he turned the northern kingdom after he had that council with Rehoboam. Um, he turned the people back to what? To follow idolatry. Okay? Because he knew if they followed the God of Israel, they would put his ass to death, man. So he resurrected the two golden calves again. You see? And those are one of the, the telltale signs in, in identifying who the northern kingdom is because they're heavy into it. Idolatry in Cesare Borgia, as we can see down in Brazil. They created another statue that's even bigger than Christ the Redeemer in Rio de Janeiro. So they heavy into that, man. Ephraim and the rest of the tribes, the ten tribes. Okay? This is why Solomon said this. This is Wisdom of Solomon. This won't be a long lesson. Just had to report on this to the Spirit, man, because, um, um, matter of fact, let me get Wisdom of Psalm chapter 15, verse 10. The Most High hates these idols, man. That's in the Ten Commandments, which people supposedly know. She talks about making graven images, man. 
of any likeness in heaven above and that's in the earth beneath or um or that's in the water under the earth you're not supposed to be making graven images to bow down to them and to serve them okay scripture says this wisdom psalm chapter 15 verse 10. the whole chapter is good right you can also read in the 14th chapter it tells you that the devising of idols is the beginning of spiritual um, um fornication or adultery okay so let me read it wisdom psalm chapter 15 verse 10. it says his heart is ashes his hope is more vile than earth and his life of less value than clay for as much he knew not his maker and him that inspired into him an active soul who says the most high an incorruptible spirit is in all things okay we even you know you have people in jeremiah the 10th chapter the scripture tells you about that they dismayed at the signs of heaven they're worshiping the sun and the moon and the stars what you read jeremiah the epistle of jeremiah the apocrypha the sixth chapter circa the 43rd chapter tells you that they're in their order man going back to genesis they gave praise to Yahweh by Shemel Shah. All right, but scripture says, to that make these idols, for they counted our life as a pastime and our time here a market for gain. For so they say, we must be getting every way, every way, though it be by evil means. For this man that of earthly matter maketh brittle vessels and graven images, north himself to offend above all others. And all the enemies of thy people that hold them in sub subjection are most foolish and are more miserable than very babes. They're more foolish than actual children. Man. Okay? To worship a vessel that was created by a man here on earth, man. How stupid is that, man? How foolish is that, man? And give a reverence to this idol or this graven image. You see? It says, for they counted all the idols of the heathen to be gods. So Israel was dumb, man. That scripture calls you sodish children. And they were doing this right in the wilderness. When Moses went on Mount Sinai to get the law. They got Aaron to go off, man. It says, which neither have the use of eyes to see. They don't have eyes. They don't have any senses. They're not intact. They're not living. They can't hear you. They can't see you. They can't touch you. They can't talk to you, man. Okay? They were a vessel created by another man. No noses to draw breath, no ears to hear, no fingers of hands to handle. And for the, as for their feet, they are slow to go. But man made them, and he that barred his own spirit fashioned them. But no man can make a god like unto himself. Okay? You see? So people are foolish as hell, man. Solomon is going into that. The foolishness of idolatry and the devising of idols. Okay. These things are not, it's not living. All right. They're just, they're just clay, man. And this is what Daniel showed in Bell and the Dragon. Matter of fact, I'm going to have to get that preset instead of quoting it. Let's get it. Mm, you're part of the That's what Daniel said. Bell and the Dragon, chapter 1, verse. Verse 22. Therefore the king slew him and delivered Bell into Daniel's power, who destroyed him in his temple. Okay, because the priests were really um, taking the food. Okay, and then you have put that substance to show their footsteps. But this is the point I'm going to get out. Um, and that same place there was a great dragon which they of Babylon worship. And the king said unto Daniel, "Will thou also say that this is a brass?" Let me get that actually. Let's see, uh, brass. Uh, where are we at? Let me see. Uh, in fact, let me just read that verse again. 
And the king said unto Daniel, Will thou also say that this is a brass? Lo, he liveth, he eateth and drinketh. Thou canst not say that he is no living God. Therefore worship him. Then Daniel, then said Daniel unto the king, I will worship Yahweh Shah my power, for he is the living God. But give me leave, O king, and I shall slay this dragon without sword or staff. The king said, I will give thee leave. Then Daniel took a pitch and fat and hair and did seethe them together, combined them, and made lumps thereof. This he put in the dragon's mouth, so that the dragon burst into sunder. And Daniel said, Lo, these are the gods he worshipped. <laughs> he destroyed that, man. So Daniel's like a scientist of his time, man. All right. So he destroyed Bel and the dragon, one of the gods of Babylon. All right. When they of Babylon heard it, they took great indignation and conspired against the king, saying, The king has become a Jew, and he have destroyed Bel, he have slain the dragon, and put the priest to death. And we all know that Daniel got thrown in the lion's den. What happened? Yahweh Shemel Shah delivered him, man. And he sent Habakkuk, got an angel to teleport him, and Habakkuk then gave Daniel food, fed him. So our power is a living God, man. And he showed the king. That you people of that empire, you're foolish, man, for worshiping a God that was created by man's hands. Okay, our God, our power is a living God, man. That's what the scripture says in Acts 17, 29. Let me get that. Apostle Paul was breaking it down. Let me get that. In Acts 17. All right, when he was speaking on Mars Hill to them, uh, stiff necked Jakes in Athens, let's get it. In Acts chapter 17, verse 29, he says, For as much then we are the offspring of the Most High. All right, we're the sons of the power. We ought not to think that the Godhead, okay, the Most High, his son, the Allah I am the host of heaven is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device because that's what men did all their gods they made them what idols and bowed down to worship it okay the idols was a, was a medium between them and their, their so called god they worship man they just gave him an image most I said is he's, he's, he's not like unto gold silver or stone his incorruptible spirit is in all things man that's why his name is he is he's in and he's everything okay you see so like the apostle paul and paul was causing hell when you go into a uh, dying of ephesus he's cursing him jake's out man and one of the um uh in acts 19 chapter how you call it uh one of the silversmiths i think his name was demetrius if i can remember he was getting pissed off because Apostle Paul was what was uh, destroying his business by telling people to turn away from idolatry and to turn away from Diana, man. And he said, yo, this guy is doing this throughout all Asia. OK. And just like right now, that's why they starting to, uh, the truth is starting to get a little bit more coverage now because it's, it's affecting everywhere. And that's what Yahweh Shai said the kingdom of heaven will be like, man. The smallest seed will become the biggest tree. All right. But like uh, we were reading earlier, like Daniel said, and like Josh also said in Joshua, the third chapter, that our God is a living God, a living power. man. OK, back then he was with us in the wilderness. And also during that time of Joshua going to the land of Canaan, we had the actual ark there. His presence was there. Okay, then we actually built a temple. His presence was there, man. That was our connection to the Most High. Okay, now we have His Son. Now He dwells in us, man. You see? And the scripture says, man, He's always with us, man. Yahweh Shai said He'd be with us to the ends of the earth. Okay, so like we're saying, man, like, like King David said, 1 Chronicles 16 26. So the Lord ain't with this idolatry shit, man. Like we said, men in this era uh, also um, become idols. 
these celebrities and these stars and we see what's happening with them. All right. Most well, eyes putting their ass down. Scripture says first Chronicles 16, 26 for all the gods, every last one of them of the people are idols. Any power outside of Yahweh Shemesh is an idol, man, a false deity, man, or just a demon. Okay? They're idols, but Yahweh Shemesh made the heavens. That's his handiwork. And we know him. That's the beautiful thing, man. That's why Tobit said, I'm going to just close this, pre close this lesson out. I don't want to do nothing long. Okay? Let's get it. Tobit chapter 14. Verse 10. My verse 6. Tobit chapter 14, verse 5. And this for go into media, my son. Tobit speaking to son Tobias. For I surely believe those things which the prophet Jonas, the prophet. <clears throat> Spake of Nineveh that it shall be overthrown, and at a time of peace shall rather be in Midia, which is Iran, that our scattered brethren shall lie scattered in the earth from that good land, and Jerusalem shall be desolate, which we know started with the northern kingdom, and then later on the southern kingdom, and the house of the Most High, and it shall be burned, and it shall be desolate for a time, right? But you know, the camp temple was restored the second time, but then it got destroyed the final time in 70 AD. Right. And that the most and then again, the most I will have mercy on them and bring them again into the land where they shall build a temple, but not like the first until that time of that age be fulfilled. And afterward, they shall return from all places there, that captivity, which we're coming. We're in that time right now. OK, so we had the first temple destroyed. It was rebuilt again. It didn't have the glory like the first, but that temple was destroyed. But this time we're returning again where well, Yahweh Shai is going to bring us back into that land. All right. And build up Jerusalem gloriously. He told you that in Tobit, the 13th chapter. And the house of the Most High shall be built in it forever with a glorious building as the prophets have spoken thereof. Man. Right. Which we know the third temple is spiritual, man. The new Jerusalem. Right. Which is the 144. And let's read on. And all nations shall turn and fear Yahweh Bashem Shai truly and shall bury their idols man. all nations man okay our people that scattered and it is going to trickle down to the other nations the actual heathen man they have to learn that's what Isaiah the second chapter was going into okay they're going to have to go up to Jerusalem to learn from us how to serve and reverence Yahweh Bashem El Shah so all nations shall praise Yahweh Bashem El Shah, and his people shall confess the Most High. And the Lord shall exalt his people and all those which love the Lord power in truth and justice and shall rejoice, show mercy to our brethren. Call him Yahweh Bashem El Shah. It's the time we coming into, man. Okay. Yahweh Bashem El Shah, like the stuff was going into, he's going to be exalted, man. And all these other idols and these false gods and these deities and these different religions, they're going to be cast down. Like Jeremiah said, we close it out with this actually. Jeremiah 10, verse 10. It says, um, chapter's good. Uh,. Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 10, it says, But Yahweh Bashim al Shah is a true power. He is a living power, man. He's not an idol. Right? Our power is alive, man. And he's everywhere. An everlasting king. And at his wrath, the earth shall tremble, and the nation shall not be able to abide his indignation. When he sent his son back, Yahweh Shai. Thus shall he say unto them, The gods. That have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. See, he have made the world by his power through his son Yahweh Shai, and he have established the world by his wisdom, which the wisdom of the Most High is his son, and have stretched out the heavens by his discretion. When he uttered his voice, there's a multitude of waters in the heavens, okay, and he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. 
Okay, so the Most High created space. He created the waters under the, the heavens, this firmament right here. Okay, called H2O. You see, um, soon it says, He caused the vapors to ascend to the ends of the earth. He make it lightness with rain and bring it forth the wind out of out of his treasures. See, which no man really knows what that is. He, he asked Job that question. You know, where does he pull the wind from? Where does he pull darkness from? We don't know. We'll find that out in the kingdom, man. Every man is brutish in his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. You see? So people who worship these idols, these graven images, they're brutes in knowledge, man. Okay, they're reprobates, man. They're slow. All right, they're foolish. For his molten image is falsehood and there's no breath in them. They are vanity. So all them high ass statues and different idols, this all vanity. They did for nothing. And the work of errors in the time of their visitation, they shall perish. And that time is now, man. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh bringing plagues and death on this earth, man. All right. So hopefully this was edifying. Say, call him, lie, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shalom.